Good morning. morning. Friends, it is good to be together. It is good to be back. Um, I was out sick last week. Nothing pains me more than to be close to you all, uh, but not to be here. So I am glad to be feeling better and uh, glad to be back home again with all of you this morning. Um, I realized uh, in all of my uh, disjointedness last week, I forgot to write an introduction for our guest preacher. Um, So I wanted to let you know that uh, Nicole, who was here last week, was uh, a friend of mine from seminary. We took summer Greek together and um, had a wonderful time. And uh, she now lives out here and is the program assistant for the Peace and Spirituality Center. Um, of the sister of Joseph, St. Joseph of Peace. Um, So she works nearby and supports folks in their journeys of spirituality and rest. Um, She helps run retreats uh, through that uh, that program there. Today is a very exciting day, lots of good things going on. Uh, We will resume ice cream theology today for those who have been anxiously waiting to find out what Neapolitan ice cream means. Uh, you are welcome to join us uh, in the chapel at 11.30. Um, And tonight, we have been looking forward to this event for quite some time. Uh, We are going to have our Pride Learn and Serve event. So 5 o'clock tonight, we'll be watching the documentary 1946. Um, It's phenomenal. I'm excited to watch it again. Uh, And then we'll go over to the Great Hall to have a potluck and a chance for response to all that we will learn uh, in the documentary. So I do hope, even if you haven't signed up yet, I hope that you will join us uh, this evening at five o'clock. We have friends from Overlake Park Presbyterian, uh, and Redmond Presbyterian, and a couple of friends I met this past week who would like to come join us as well. Uh, Wanted to make sure that we um, highlight the donation area out in the narthex. Um, We are collecting donations for the asylum seekers at Riverton Park United Methodist Church. Um, We are glad to find ways to be supporting um, hundreds, borderline thousands of asylum seekers who are right next door um, trying to find their way here in a land of promise and a land of a land of freedom. So uh, feel free to grab one of the sheets um, that tells you what to help contribute, and we'll be taking those together the first week in July. And last but certainly not least, next Sunday is our Pride Sunday. We are very excited to have a few different options of ways to celebrate um, the diversity and color of our community. Um, So some of us will be going to downtown Seattle for the Seattle Pride Parade. Uh, If you would like to join us there, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll get you that information um, where we're meeting in the times. Um, And if you love that idea, but it's just a little too many people and uh, a little too much stress to get down there, um, no fear, we will still have um, a potluck breakfast here. So 10 o'clock next Sunday, um, you're welcome to join folks here at the church. Um, We'll have a good time for fellowship and as well as a prayer uh, service then too. Friends, it is a good day to be together um, and it's a good day to take a deep breath. To rest in the goodness of God and the belovedness of each and every one of us. I loved in uh, Nicole's sermon last week, she talked about a beautiful broken record, things that we hear over and over again. And I hope that this can be a space where you hear a beautiful broken record, that you are loved, you are enough, that you are welcome and needed here. So this space today is for learning and wrestling, for rest and refueling for contemplation and connection. I've had it on my heart in the last few weeks to do something a little differently, so worship is going to flow uh, unlike usual today. I've picked out a few different scriptures um, and aligned them in some different sections for some different themes. And then at the end of service, we're gonna have some stations around the sanctuary as a way of responding to the word that we've heard. 
Because this space is not just about me and the things that I have to say. And it's not really about you either. Hopefully that's a relief. But this is a space about belonging to a God who pursues love at all costs. A Messiah who has been where we are and chooses still to journey with us. And a spirit that calls us continually to faith, hope, and love. So these are the things that bring us together this morning. Welcome to worship, friends. To add to the unusual nature of today's uh, service, this is so-called pickup choir day. And uh, for those of you who are not quite sure what that is, that means while the choir is on break, we provide some days during the summer. The next one is July 28th. Uh, to uh, just get together right before the service and throw something together. It's very casual uh, and very fun. And while the choir is standing to get to ready to sing for you, I would like to extend a... <laughs> Sometimes people are a little bit slow on the draw. Um, so I would like to extend an invitation for any of you to come join us. As you know, the motto for the movie Alien is in space. No one can hear you scream. So, well, in a choir, nobody can hear your individual voice. So it's much safer than space. And so uh, I'd like to invite any of you. One of the things that would thrill me the most, I, it's on my bucket list, is to actually have one of these pickup Sundays and somebody who's not in the choir come up and join us. <laughs> Notice I'm not waiting. <laughs> Okay, anyway, the piece we're doing today is Ave Verum Corp, this very special piece of music in the life of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So in the end of his life, Mozart's wife was constantly sick. Uh, uh, again and again and again, she had uh, difficult pregnancies, often miscarried. Uh, so they sent her to, uh, what they did in Austria back that time is they, people went to these uh, bath resorts where they take the waters and hopefully be healed by that. And she was at one of these places, little village, uh, uh, about a 60 mile uh, uh, trip from Vienna. And he went to visit her and while he was there, the priest at the local parish said, oh, this is the great Mozart in our little humble town, is there anything? Uh, perhaps a little piece that you could write for our church choir. Um, so he wrote this, and it has become one of the most beloved, enduring pieces of choral music ever written. Humble beginnings, but uh, just a great piece of music. It is comforting. Um, we're going to project the uh, slides with the translation as we sing it in Latin. Uh, and please don't uh, 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 think that at this point, if you want to join us, you uh, have to stop. And even if we start singing this and you feel inspired, walk down here and grab the music and join. I mean it. <laughs>
The first scripture reading for today is Habakkuk 1, verses 2 through 4 and 13 through 17. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. Your eyes are too pure to behold evil, and you cannot look on wrongdoing. Why do you look on the treacherous and are silent when the wicked swallow those more righteous than they? You have made people like the fish of the sea, like crawling things that have no ruler. He brings all of them up with a hook. He drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his seine, so he rejoices and exalts. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and makes offerings to his sane. For by them his portion is lavish and his food is rich. Is he then to keep on emptying his net and destroying nations without mercy? On Tuesday night, I marched with nearly 100 other community members from Lake Boren Park to Newcastle City Hall for the city council meeting to speak out against the council's decision not to, fl not to fly a pride flag this June. I must say I felt hopeful and encouraged by the show of people in rainbow colors with signs affirming that everyone belongs and that they do not welcome hate in Newcastle. However, that joy quickly faded for me as we approached City Hall, met with blasting praise music and huge American flags waved in our faces as the crowd of people in support of the council's original decision yelled religious and queer-phobic nonsense at us. And I find this to be an important part of our pride recognition here at Newport, because this is a reality that we all face in the world. Whether you're part of the LGBTQ plus community or an ally, for as much as we celebrate queer and inclusive joy, and we certainly will celebrate in this service and always, we also have moments of crying out, how long, O oh Lord? We cry violence and yet are not saved. Tuesday night was just one example. I so deeply related to the prophet Habakkuk asking where and why do we have to see so much wrongdoing, looking at trouble. Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise, so the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. As a church and as a people, we don't really know what to do with lament and grief. Sometimes it can feel like if we acknowledge it, it may never stop. There's so much that's dark and heavy in our world. Thankfully, our scriptures have quite a few examples for us of what it means to bring all of that to God. All of our frustration and hurt and longing for better. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful to sit with the words from Habakkuk, someone who understands what it's like to be living in a season of injustice and idolatry, talking straight to God to demand God's attention 
to the suffering and injustice in the world, demanding that God does something. And what I love even more about the book of Habakkuk, an often overlooked book in our holy texts, is that when God responds to Habakkuk's cries, telling Habakkuk the army of Babylon is coming to bring God's punishment to all for the sins of Israel, Habakkuk speaks up again. He says, absolutely not. They are worse than Israel, and I do not understand how you, a holy and good God, can use such corrupt nations as your instruments. It's only then that God responds again, assuring Habakkuk and all of the people with the vision of the future coming kingdom. A future and a vision they can put their faith in and work toward even in these times of devastation and injustice. And friends, that's what I saw ultimately on Tuesday night. A group of people sharing their woes, naming their hurts, demanding something better. Person after person decked out in rainbows, sharing what the pride flag means to them, and how they were here, despite their fear, to help the community be what it can be. May we all live into this vision of a better world to come, free to acknowledge all of our emotions along the way. I would like you all, I invite you all to stand if able, and sing this with us, this uh, song uh, you probably have never heard, but it's to a tune that everybody knows called Beach Spring. Uh, you'll recognize it immediately, and it's about how we can get over our division. You came that we might have life more abundantly. Abundance eludes too many of us, O oh God. We are slow to confront our complicity and investment in the evils of white supremacy and dominance. We live in a world in which indigenous, black, brown, and queer brothers, sisters, and siblings 
are expected and compelled to offer for forgiveness at a discount. When the cheeks are turned, they are met with another hand to the face or knee to the throat. Forgiveness is too infrequently met with in repentance. This, O oh God, we name as sin. Many of us lament and strive against that sin. Help and empower us to continue that work with diligence and faith. Too many of us still waver and are unconvinced that there is a problem. Move our hearts of stone and replace them with hearts of flesh that are softened toward our siblings. Help us to reckon not only with our personal failings, but also with our institutional history and the ways the church has helped to create and uphold systems of inequality. We humble ourselves and cry out to you in the hope that you will hear us and heal us. Amen. Hear this good and abiding news. God does not leave us where God finds us. This is the promise made to us by the God who created us in God's own image. The space between God's abundance and these hard truths is where grace meets us. And it is this grace that compels us to answer the call to go where the Spirit leads. Let us release our attachments to our current world order and walk bravely into the world you've intended for us, even and especially when it costs us something. We are found here in this place. We are forgiven. We are beloved. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture text this morning is from Luke chapter 5. On one of the days while Jesus was teaching, some proud religious law keepers and teachers of the law were sitting by him. They had come from every town in the countries of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was there to heal them. Some men took a man who was not able to move his body to Jesus. He was carried on a bed. They looked for a way to take the man into the house where Jesus was. But they could not find a way to take him in because there were so many people. They made a hole in the roof over where Jesus stood. Then they let the bed of the sick man down on it before Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The teachers of the law and the proud religious law keepers thought to themselves, Who is this man who speaks as if he is God? Who can forgive sins but God only? Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said to them, why do you think this way in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk? So, that you may know the Son of Man has the right and the power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who could not move his body, I say to you, get up, take your bed, and go home. At once, the sick man got up in front of them. He took his bed and went to his home, thanking God. And all those who were there were surprised and gave thanks to God, saying, we have seen very special things today. One of the most powerful theological perspectives I've come across in my studies over the years comes from disability theology. I have a distinctive memory of being in a class at Princeton where our TA, who was deaf, 
was walking through the healing texts in the Gospels. The first passage we looked at was this story from Luke. Now, of course, our minds tend to focus on that which is uncomfortable to us. A man who is sick and can't walk. But he encounters Jesus, and lo and behold, the sick man picks up his bed and walks home. He shared that through his experience as a person with a disability. This is absolutely the wrong definition of healing for stories like these. This man's sickness, or my TA's deafness, is not an inherent problem waiting to be fixed. The healing comes from restoration to community. I'll say that again because it's really important. The real healing comes from restoration to community. This happens in this story when the men are walking by and they one stop to evaluate the situation and three, creatively find a way to bring this sick man to the group. That is the healing in this story. And this is the kind of healing that's much more faithful, much more inclusive, much more sustainable than simply eradicating disease or disability. Because our true strength is when we are together. My TA continued through countless stories highlighting that very rarely is a person's disability removed in these gospel accounts. Instead, when we pay close attention, these stories serve to highlight the importance of community. His favorite example was in Mark chapter 7. Jesus touches the tongue of a deaf man and opens his ears so that he could be understood by those around him. All that matters in this story is that that man can communicate with his neighbors. I find this story important as we take a deeper look at pride and inclusion this Sunday, because we may be tempted to invest our time, energy, and resources to fix problems that aren't, in fact, problems rather than simply work for a seat at the table for queer friends and neighbors. I've seen this a lot in my ministry in debates about sexuality in the Bible. Um, It's a great plug for tonight's event if you weren't planning to come yet. But we want to disprove or throw out these clobber passages that seemingly prevent LGBTQ plus people from love and belonging in God's kingdom. But when we take a step back, our scriptures and our own experience affirms that God is love. End of story. Love that casts out fear. Love that makes room. Love that falls down but always gets back up again. Love that forgives and forgives and forgives again. Love that welcomes the stranger. Love that meets us on the margins. So my encouragement this morning, especially to a congregation that already does a wonderful job of advocating and including, is not to get overwhelmed by all the things that could be fixed, or could be perfect, or might be problems. And instead, rest in the goodness of the examples of healing we already have from our brother Jesus, focusing on welcoming one another into community and doing the good work that God has planned for us together. I invite you to remain seated through this next song. Uh, We'll do four verses of it. Uh, It's very possible that many of you have heard this before, sung it before, And also possible that many of you don't know it. So what I'll do is I'll play one verse through, and then we'll sing together.
God of wild love and extravagant acceptance, spirit of boldness and beauty, you are faithfully present in both the grit and glitter of life. And you are present here with us now. Awaken us to your dream for creation, a world in which every member of the human family is free to flourish however you have made them. Forgive us for the moments we have held back, your ever-flowing current of love, dignity, and justice. Remake us into a people eager to see you in the faces, bodies, and expressions of all people. Remind us, <coughs> excuse me, remind each of us to step out of the shadows of our lives and shine fearlessly and courageously. Ignite the divine light within us to sparkle through the prism of our bodies and brighten every corner of this earth. And so we join our voices together in affirmation. Holy One, you call each of us beloved, each of us cherished, each of us desired, each of us sacred. And so we give you thanks now and forever. Amen. Oh. Yay. Good morning. How are you? School's out, huh? That's a good thing, huh? All right. Where are we sitting? Are we going to sit here? Okay. Awesome. Good morning. So, you folks all know what a bridge is. I want you to picture a bridge in your mind. Okay, got it? What does your bridge look like? The Golden Gate Bridge, ooh, that's fancy, right? It's big, it's called a suspension bridge. Anybody have a different bridge in your head? I have one of those little wood bridges, you know, you're out walking the trails and there's a little wood bridge that maybe isn't even any longer than the table here, but it crosses maybe a little creek and it might be a little mossy. That's the kind of bridge I'm thinking of. Did any of you drive over bridges this morning to get here? those big freeway bridges that go over a road that's underneath. There are so many different kinds of bridges, right? There are the little tiny ones like I talked about. They're the great big ones that cross like 
big bodies of water. But what do bridges really do? What does a bridge help us do? If there isn't a bridge, where are we? Can't get across. Yeah, we can't get across. We're stuck on one side, and so a bridge helps us get from one thing to another. A bridge connects. Now, in today's Bible story that Pastor Kelly read for us, there are some men that kind of work as a bridge. They help a man get to Jesus so that he can, as Pastor Kelly said, be part of the community again. And that's the beauty of bridges, that no matter how small and maybe beat up they are for those that we cross when we're walking in the woods, or no matter how big and fancy they are, like the Golden Gate, they help us get from one thing to another. And as I was thinking about bridges this week, I thought, we can be bridges, right? If you see someone at recess all by themselves, how could you be a bridge and show God's love to that person? Someone's on the playground all by themselves, or maybe sitting in lunch all by themselves. Could you be brave enough to ask them to join you? Yeah? When you do that, you are a bridge. And do you ever maybe not understand something at school and you need someone to help you understand it, like your teacher? Your teacher is acting like a bridge. How can we be bridges so that people understand that God loves them, so that people can come join us in God's love? And it's a hard idea, isn't it? How can we be a bridge? Ideas? Open. Be open so they know that we accept them. What else can we do? Could we bake a neighbor cookies? Mm -hmm. Could we ask someone to join us in a water balloon fight? Yeah. Anytime we ask someone to be part of our community, we're building a bridge so they can see that God loves us. And that, my friends, is a challenge for you this week. I want you to find one way this week that you can be a bridge and help people see that God loves them. You willing to try? Yeah? You're tired this morning, aren't you? Uh-huh. Okay, will you stand up and pass the peace with me? Oh. Okay, you're gonna get up? Okay, we'll hold out our hands, ready? And we'll say, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Will you stand, please, and share God?
Our third scripture reading this morning is from Galatians, chapter 3, verses 24 through 29. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. A wise professor once told me to read Galatians as if Paul is yelling at you. And only then will you understand Paul's passion and correction that he's offering to this community. Because for about 99% of the book, that's exactly what's happening. Paul is getting reports of people who are deeply misguided, causing all kinds of issues, and being real jerks in the process. So Paul is rather angrily putting the Galatian church back in its place. But here in chapter 3, I imagine Paul taking an exasperated breath. And as his voice gives out from all of the yelling, he gets to the point of all of his frustration. This is not about law and order. This is not about us versus them. This is not about racing to the front of the line or saving up scraps in case they run out of what you need. Christ came so that we might all rejoice in our collective family, the kingdom of God right here and now. So all the divisions we try to create The walls we try to put up just don't matter. And the sooner we get over that, the sooner we stop comparing ourselves and leaving one another out and worrying that there's not enough to go around, the sooner we get to celebrate what this inheritance means and the freedom, joy, and love it intends for us all. It reminds me of the pop culture phrase you may have heard a time or two, the gay agenda. This is not queer people trying to brainwash your children or take your rights away. This is not drag queens forcing you to wear makeup or non-binary folks changing your pronouns. The real gay agenda, and you can quote me on this, is a desire to live freely and fully without fear of violence, without worrying about housing or employment status, without changing who we are or who we love. And in perhaps one of the strangest statements I'll ever say from the pulpit, I think Paul's words here in Galatians serve this gay agenda well. There is no longer Greek or Jew. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. End of story. And that is what we celebrate during Pride Month, honoring Juneteenth, on Mother's Day and Father's Day in the church around the world, our belonging to one another and our belonging in the love of God. That is who we are, and that is something to celebrate. Amen. You may also remain seated for this next song, which you probably know. Uh, It's in our hymnal.
As we come together in prayer again, I invite you to hold a posture of prayer that's most comfortable for you. I'll pause between sections saying, be with us, O oh God, in our becoming. And then I'll invite you to respond, for this is loving and being loved. Let's practice that together. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming. For this is loving and being loved. Let us pray. To become is a lifelong process. Nothing is constant, not even the self. We evolve in the midst of narratives meant only for some and ways of being made narrow by fear and power. We must then have the courage to listen to the truth, the truth of our own lives, to the wisdom that comes from within, responding without resistance or need to control, but with welcome and curiosity. This is what ensures our becoming is an unfolding of our truest self. This lifelong labor cannot be carried out alone. It requires help from friends and lovers, family and creaturely companions who bear witness to what makes us come alive and say to us, listen, look, feel, pay attention to that. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming and being loved. Telling the stories, sharing in the memories, giving thanks for the relationships, understandings, and experiences past that have shaped us to this day. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming. Celebrating new beginnings that excite, holding risks together, leaning into unknown with the promises of support and companionship. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming. Loving and being loved. Listening to the future, calling uniquely to hold to our calling uniquely to each of us in the midst of all of life's noise, helping one another find our place in the shared labor of collective life, supporting each other in what it is the world's ache is asking from us. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming, for this is loving and being loved. To say for the first time, this is who I am, this is the truth of my body, this is what I know about myself. This is my name, and this is where my path is leading me. And to have it heard, have it received, have it affirmed, and then to say it again and again as we change and as the world changes, and to have each proclamation greeted with an open-armed embrace be with us, O oh God, in our becoming, for this is loving and being loved. There is no one without you. We shape one another. The sacred that birthed us weaves us our lives together so that we can only find ourselves through shared becoming. For my journey and all its winding ways, for yours. For all the saints who labored for what is, all the kin whose lives made ours possible, for all those yet to come for whom living our truths today will mean breaking possibilities open for them tomorrow. We pause, we give thanks, we acknowledge. Be with us, O oh God, in our becoming, for this is loving and being loved. Amen. And now we come to the part of the service where we get to respond. And that can look however you'd like. There are stations around the sanctuary if you'd like some direction. 
It's a chance to write out um, prayer requests and offerings for the community over here. There are cards of support and affirmation for local queer youth up here. There's a space for some uh, prayer, some printed prayers that have been meaningful to me recently in the back. And the baptismal font is here as well as a reminder of your belovedness in the eyes of God and in the midst of this community. For our friends joining online, you are also welcome to write out your prayer requests, to find some paper, to make a card. You're welcome to send those to the church and we can add them to our collection. You can also fill a bowl with water at home or listen to the songs and soak up the words. Know that you're welcome to use this space too for whatever you need. So I'm gonna play a few songs that are important to me, especially during Pride Month. And I'll invite you to take and use this space for yourself, and then I'll close us with a benediction. Hey Paul, it's not that I don't believe your story, but you saw the Lord appearing in all his glory. And you fell down at his feet in the middle of the street, and then you couldn't speak for a week. Say Paul, I wonder would it scandalize you if you saw how everyone has canonized you. How every word you said was on God's own. Let her head his spirit is caught in your throat. Now every Pharisee must die eventually by every word you wrote. Paul. Hey, Paul, if you could see how you regret it. After all, the law has made you see as wretched. Would it break your heart to know your church won't marry folks who love sees as a thorn? Because maybe you never knew that Jesus loving you exactly the way you were born. Paul, you're still killing us, Paul. You're still killing us, Paul. If you're getting over 85, you fell for your whole life. When God made you, he just messed up. If you've been raised a southern belle, 
born and bred show and tell lie down feeling never good enough I'm so sorry how it's been with broken artists broken hands paint off right call it true sorry no one explained Jesus Heard a knock on your front door. All you found on the porch was a pastor that just wanted to be right. If you really want to pray to him, but you're never sure he's listening, because who could forgive for what you did last night? I'm so sorry for what you Broken poets, silly words, paint genders, call it true. Sorry, no one explained Jesus to you. I'm so sorry for all wrong, broken singers, broken songs, we paint our pride, we call it true, I'm sorry no one explained Jesus to you, I'm sorry no one explained Jesus to you. Sorry, no one explained Jesus to you. Things that you can't hold on to Are the ones that you wish you could keep Are you really ready to pay for love If it costs you everything All of God Believe in a world that's beyond me. I believe in a world I ain't seen. Past the glass, shotgun shafts, and Bible faceless racist facts. I believe in a world that's made clean. 
all of God's children. All of God's children shine on me. Shine on me. Underneath the Underneath these walls, underneath the bullet holes, I still know who we are. Shine underneath, shine underneath. Like a newborn child. Oh, like a newborn child. Shine on me. Shine on me. Friends, these stations will be open for the afternoon if you'd like to come back or spend some more time. And our church remains open and affirming, <clears throat> celebrating all of the goodness of all of God's children. May you know that this is a space where you are loved and you are enough today and every day. As you're ready to leave this place, may you know that Christ goes before you to plan and prepare your way. Holy Spirit walks beside you as friend and companion for the journey. And most importantly, the God of redemption persists above you, calling and reconciling your life now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>